There's been a lot of hype over the past month around the new Ryzen 4000 CPUs because they seem to perform better than Intel CPUs in metrics like performance, battery life, and cost. If you take a look at Intel's pricing right now, you're shaving off like $200 or more off an equivalent laptop running the 6-core i7 and even more off laptops running the 8-core i9. But the laptop that we're going to be talking about today is the Asus Tough A15. I believe it's their budget lineup of gaming laptops. It starts at 700 bucks and my unit comes in at $1,000 for the 8-core CPU and a 1660 Ti, which is the configuration that I would recommend to most people in terms of value. So let's talk about this thing. One area that a lot of inexpensive laptops save money on is build quality. So this is made of aluminum and plastic, and it feels a lot more rigid and stronger than it initially expected. The screen flex is about average, but I would consider this pretty good for the price. The keyboard deck is also fairly rigid, and I assume they reinforced it with metal underneath to help with that. The hinge has about the same tension as like a MacBook hinge, and surprisingly, you can open the screen with one hand, it's stiff enough to not close under its own weight when closed halfway, but loose enough for one hand open. It's not stiff enough to eliminate the screen wobble, there is quite a bit of that, but I imagine this won't be a concern for most gamers. I also think they did a great job with the top of the laptop. It has this nice clean gray finish with a dark gray logo. Very clean, very modern. I think they did a really good job with that. They've opted for a full-size keyboard for this laptop, and I think it's pretty good. It could definitely use a bit more key travel, but the layout is good, and I haven't really come across any issues regarding typing speed and accuracy. Uh, it's also got RGB backlighting, but it's single zone, meaning you can only have one color at a time across the entire keyboard. One very small detail that I normally would have overlooked but recently found to be an issue on a different laptop is that most keyboards are depressed into the case. Otherwise, the keycaps would hit the screen when you close the lid. But what they've done here is they've completely eliminated the ledge between the trackpad and the keyboard so you won't have any issues hitting the spacebar with your thumb. Again, this has only been an issue with one other laptop in my experience, but it's still something that I thought was worth mentioning. The trackpad is okay, not good, but not bad either. The surface is quite smooth if you lightly glide over it, but the moment you put a bit of pressure on it, you start to feel this sticky, leathery effect. The tracking acceleration is good, but it's kind of fuzzy in terms of directional accuracy. So let's say I want to move my cursor directly to the right. It'll often deviate a little bit up or a little bit down. It doesn't really go perfectly in the direction that I want. For the screen, you have two options. There's a 1080p 60Hz panel and a 1080p 144Hz panel, which I have with my unit. This is not the same panel as most of what you'll see on everything above like $1,200 or so. This is a cheaper panel that doesn't support quite as wide of a color gamut. They even state this in their spec sheet, so you shouldn't be too surprised by that. But I will note that everything else is just about the same as what you'll find on the Blade 15 or the MSI GS65. It's got acceptable brightness, contrast is quite good, but color accuracy is inherently quite poor because of that limited color gamut. The speakers fire down onto your desk, and I think they sound respectable. They get quite loud, louder than the majority of laptops that I've personally tested, regardless of price. The bass response isn't very pronounced, there's like a little bit in the upper bass, enough to make vocals not sound hollow, but not much more than that. Uh, Mid-range and vocals are detailed and forward, but there's a fair bit of distortion in the treble. Not unpleasantly so, but it kind of loses a bit of detail in those higher frequencies. In terms of ports, you have power, Ethernet, HDMI, two USB-As, those are 3.2 Gen 1, one USB-C, a headphone jack, and on the right is one singular USB 2.0 port. If you opt for the 2.5 inch drive slot, you get a smaller 48 watt hour battery, but if you exclude that, you make room for a larger 90 watt hour battery, and from the other reviews that I have seen, they claim around 10.5 hours of battery life. The unit that I am reviewing obviously comes with the 2.5 inch drive slot, so I've got the smaller battery, but I'm getting about 5-ish hours of battery life, maybe 4.5 if I'm a little bit heavier. I wouldn't recommend the 2.5 inch drive slot myself, since you have the second M.2 slot for extra storage. If you can't decide, I would say default to the bigger battery, unless you know you need that extra 2.5 inch drive slot. 
I think I'm going to talk about thermals before performance since performance with powerful components and a small form factor heavily relies on good thermals. Uh, my unit is configured with the Ryzen 7 4800H, so that's an 8 core 16 thirds CPU and a GTX 1660 Ti. Unfortunately, the RAM is single channel even on my unit, which is 16 gigabytes. So I went ahead and swapped out the RAM from another laptop and reran all my benchmarks, which you'll see in a bit. I'll also put up some other relevant information from my testing regarding thermals and power consumption, but the short of it is that it consumes less power than the Core i7 and the Core i9, which lets it run at lower temperatures. It has a TDP of 45 watts, which the manufacturer can configure up or down between 35 and 54 watts. Um, one kind of strange thing that I can't really understand, I did see a peak of 62 watts, so I'm not sure whether its TDP is its maximum sustained power draw, unlike Intel, where you can let it go as high as you want until it reaches a temperature ceiling, but I never got it to maintain more than about 54 watts, even though it had an extra 19 degrees before it would thermal throttle. Bit of strange thing on that, uh, if anyone has an answer to that, I would highly appreciate a comment. Thermals on the GPU were also very comfortable, but once you hit the CPU and the GPU simultaneously, like in a game for example, the CPU starts to throttle down between 27 and 35 watts, ranging between 82 and 95 degrees. Uh, that was with Battlefield 5, just in case you're wondering. The same thing happens with like every other laptop that I've tested, but in case anyone assumes that the lower power consumption eliminates thermal throttling in a combined CPU and GPU load, it does not, unfortunately. So on to performance. I'm going to pull up a couple different graphs here. The first one will compare stock gaming benchmarks, so no modifications to the laptop. The next one will compare stock frame rates to frame rates after switching to dual channel memory. It's still 16 gigs if you're wondering. And the third one compares frame rates against two other laptops running the GTX 1660 Ti with Intel CPUs to roughly simulate the difference the CPU makes specifically in gaming. I'll also throw in some other CPU benchmarks, but this thing performs really well once you give it dual channel memory. And once you go even lower in price, so like say seven to $800 gaming laptops, you're gonna find more laptops running the i5 rather than the i7, and the Ryzen 7 is just leagues better than the i5. Outside of gaming, however, I would recommend checking the performance for the specific applications that you're going to be using, because depending on how well optimized the software is, it could mean that an Intel CPU will give you better performance. And just to be clear, this isn't like an Intel versus AMD thing. Like if you go from a Ryzen CPU to a Threadripper CPU, you gotta make sure that the specific programs that you're going to be using will take advantage of that new CPU. I think that covers just about everything that I wanted to say. Excellent performance, good thermals, it's got better battery life than every other Intel-based gaming laptop, and it's also reasonably priced. One last thing that I want to mention, since these Ryzen laptops are brand spanking new, if I missed any details that you think are worth mentioning, I highly encourage you to leave a comment, because if I can make better reviews, then you can make a more informed purchasing decision. Okay, that is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.